In this video, I want to talk about some elementary properties of logarithms, properties that follow immediately from the fact that if f of x is an exponential function, then f inverse is going to be the logarithm base a, right? So inverses, uh, exponentials are exponential functions are inverses to logarithms, and logarithms are inverses of exponentials. And some immediate consequences of those statements would be the following. It is a fact that the log base a of one is always, always, always zero. It doesn't matter what the base is, so long as the base is positive and not equal to one, that gives you an acceptable logarithm, and the log of one is always equal to zero. How do we see this? Well, we could convert this into the exponential form. If we move the a over to the right, the base a, you're gonna get one equals a to the zero. And as we know from exponential rules, if you raise a positive number to zero, you always get back one. And as such, since one is equal to a to the zero, this tells us that log base, log base a of one is equal to zero. So this is an important observation here that for a logarithm, assuming no transformations are in play, x equals one is gonna be the x-intercept of logarithms. It's likewise true that if you take log base a of a, that gives you a one. And again, you can translate this over into exponential form and see this fact. If you have any question about the logarithm, switch it to the logarithm or switch the logarithmic form to the exponential form. Notice that if you move the a over to the right, you're going to get a is equal to a to the first. All right. If you raise something to the first power, you get the number back. So log base a of a is equal to one. Okay. Look at this one right here. If you take the log base a of a to the x, this is equal to x. We'll move that base a to the other side, and what do you see here? If you move the a to the side, you're gonna be left with an a to the x on the left, but on the right, you're gonna get an a to the x, which is like, Durr, that's true. a to the x, of course, is equal to a to the x. And so if you take this clearly true statement and switch it to logarithmic form, you get this maybe not as obvious statement for those who are trying to learn how to speak logarithmies right? Log base a of a to the x is equal to x. This is a very, very powerful statement because when you look at this, you're saying the following, hmm, if I take log base a and I, uh, of a to the x, you give me back an x. This is just going to give you the exponent right here. What you're trying to ask yourself is the following, what power, what power of a gives me this number right here? Well, if the number itself is a power of a, you're like, what power of a gives me a to the x power? Well, it's just the x power. And I want you to convince yourself that this statement right here is none other than just the inverse function property that we've talked about previously in this lecture series. What is the inverse function property? Again, remember, if you have a function and you compose it with its inverse function, right? You have f inverse of f of x. This always turns out to be x. So a function composed with its inverse function always gives you back x. And that's what you're seeing right here. If you perform an exponential and then you perform a logarithm, it's as if nothing happened to the number. It just went on a huge, huge circle. But it, the inverse function property also goes the other way around. What if you take f of f inverse of x? That's supposed to equal x as well. So what if I do a logarithm and then an exponential? Aha, that's what we have right here. What if you take the log base a of x and you raise that to the uh, you raise that base a you exponentiate it base a that's going to be the same thing as x and i want you to think about this for a second the logarithm is the power right that is when you look at log base a of x what you're asking yourself is the following what uh so what power of a gives me x okay uh, so the log base a of x is the power of a that will produce the number x well if i raise a to the power that gives you x then of course that's gonna give you x. That's, that's what the inverse function property is saying right here. You can also, if you, again, if you want another, another statement here, this right here is an exponential form. If you move the base a to the other side, then the left-hand side will just look like the log base a of x. So you get log base a of x. And then as you move the base a to the other side, exponential base a will switch over to logarithm base a, and so you get log base a of x equals log base a of x. So again, that's a statement that's trivially true. Um, and so that's that we can see that these properties are true because their course, when we switch it to the other language, the statement has already been established to be true. Now, one thing you have to caution yourself about is this statement right here. Uh, sometimes we get things a little bit mixed around. The log of one is always equal to zero, but the log of zero is actually undefined. And the reason for that is if you, 
if this number were equal to something, let's say it equaled the number x, right? Then you could switch this to an exponential statement and get that a to the x is equal to zero, but this actually can't happen. Exponentials never can equal zero. That's where their horizontal asymptote is. And so since zero is outside the range of an exponential, that means that zero is outside the domain of a logarithm. We'll talk some more about that in a little bit. But I wanna actually show you how you can use property three right here to compute logarithms without the use of a calculator whatsoever. If you take the argument of your logarithm, if you can write that as a power of the base, then it turns out you can use that to compute uh, the logarithm. So for example, okay, if you take the log base 10 of 1000, could we write log base or can we like write 1000 as a power of 10? And the answer is yes. Powers of 10 are very easy. If your first digit is a one and you count the number of zeros, that gives you the power of 10. So this is gonna be log base 10 of 10 cubed. And so what power of, so we're asking ourselves, what power of 10 gives you 1000? Well, now we're asking ourselves, what power of 10 gives you 10 to the third power? Oh, the answer's in the question. The log base 10 of 1000 will equal three, okay? Um, here's another example, log base two of 32. What power of two gives you 32? Some of us might already know the answer, but let's just rewrite it here. 32 is equal to two to the fifth, right? Two, four, eight, 16, 32, it's the fifth power there. And so what power of two gives you two to the fifth? That's equal to the fifth power, like so. Uh, let's do another example. Let's take log base 10 of 0 0.1. What is, what, what power of 10 gives you 0 0.1? Hmm. Now this one we actually can do. It might not be obvious as a decimal, but if we switch it over to a fraction, it becomes a lot easier. Um, if we take the log base 10 of 1 tenth, right? I mean, 0.1 is a tenth, so we get the fraction 1 over 10. For which, when it's in the fraction form, we actually want to write this as an exponential statement. Uh, so 1 over 10, we can write as 10 to the negative 1. And so then what power of 10 gives you 10 to the negative 1 power? That's going to equal negative 1. Now we have two more questions I want to compute, but let me actually make a mention about some notation before we go on. Uh, when it comes to base 10, we actually talk about base 10 so frequently, like when one talks about the Richter scale or decibels um, or pH factor, you know, a lot of, a lot of things on logarithmic scales we use uh, base 10, just because our number system is a decimal number system, it's base 10. And so this is, when you work base 10, it's often called the common log. And so you might see, uh, you might see me or in other mathematical settings, someone just write down LOG and they, they didn't write down the base. You can assume, you can safely assume that if the base is not written down, you just see LOG of X, that means base 10 of X. And this is called the common log. And most scientific calculators will be equipped with some type of LOG log button. Uh, that button is used to evaluate the common logarithm. Uh, another logarithm that's very important is what we call the natural log. So the natural log is denoted ln of x, and this represents the log base e, where e is that, uh, that uh, it's that irrational number, approximately 2.7. It's a very important number when it comes to logarithms. So important that when you work base e, it's called the natural logarithm denoted ln. And most scientific or graphing calculators will have an ln function or an ln button somewhere on the keyboard. Now, in case you're afraid you're being dyslexic right now, uh, it is intentional that the natural log is denoted ln, not nl. And that the reason is the notation for the natural log actually comes from French for logarithm naturel, uh, in which case the words are transposed, their order. Uh, let's go back to this. So these, these, these ones right here, I could have actually denoted this as just log of a thousand or log of 0.1. Those would have been acceptable because by not mentioning the base, we will assume that is we're talking about the common log. Uh, let's do two more calculations here. What if we want to do log base 16 of four? This one can be kind of a tricky one. Uh, we're trying to think of, you know, what, what if we don't work for like, I don't know the answer. Let's just call it X for a moment. If, if it helps, you could switch this over to the exponential form and we get four is equal to make sure you get the right order 16 to the x right some people often confuse this with like uh we think of something like this which this isn't quite right uh because the, the numbers are in the wrong spot the x is in the wrong spot we're looking for what power of 16 gives you four now the temptation is the following it's like well i know that four squared is equal to 16. I also know that four square is a, is a great game when I was in elementary school, but four squared is equal to 16 here. Now, so the temptation might be like, oh, the answer is two, but I'm not looking for what power of four gives me 16. 
I'm looking for what power of 16 gives you four. The order of operations matters here, right? If I take two cubed, that's an eight. But on the other hand, three squared is equal to nine, right? If you switch the if you switch the exponent of the base, you get a different result. So we have to make sure not to make that mistake right here as well. But this observation, uh, this observation that four square equals 16 is helpful here because if you move the if you move the exponent to the other side you get 4 equals 16 to the 1 half there that is the square root of 16 equals 4 and that's therefore the exponent that we're looking for right here right what power of 16 gives you 4 and the answer is going to be the 1 half exponent so we get 1 half or if you prefer a decimal you get 0 0.5 and so it's very possible that when you're computing a logarithm that the calculation will involve a fraction or decimal of some kind. Uh, so with that in mind, what do we see about this one right here? The log base square root of two is equal to four. Now, when it comes to a logarithm, the only stipulation we have on the base is that the base has to be a positive number not equal to one, for which the square root of two is satisfactory there, right? So if we call, the, if we call this x for a moment, what power of the square root of two will give me four? Uh, well, let's try to see the relationship, right? You probably immediately remember that 2 squared is equal to 4. And so how do you get the square root of 2? Well, the square root of 2 squared is equal to 2. So combining these statements, we actually get that the square root of 2 to the 4th power is equal to 4. Uh, because if you square the square root of 2, you get 2. And if you square that, then you get 4. And so the double square, right, the square root of 2 squared, squared, that's where we get the square root of, uh, the square root root of two to the fourth power there. And so then the answer to this one is the log, ba the log base square root of two of four would equal four itself. And so in oftentimes we're able to compute logarithms without any calculator whatsoever. Um, we can do this if the logarithm turns out to be a rational number, a whole number or a fraction. Oftentimes though, you do get stuck with something like, uh, you have to do like say the log base two of five, right? That's gonna be a rational number. And so at some point, we, we probably need to use a calculator, but a lot of these ones we can do without a calculator. And it's a good exercise to try to do them without a calculator to actually help you understand what a logarithm actually is. Because many students kind of run around with basically their eyes on their, uh, their hands on their face here and they can't see through their eyes. And they're like, I don't know what a logarithm is. And so they just run through the, the logarithmic forest lost. Right? If you want to be successful with exponentials and logarithms, you have to understand what a logarithm is actually computing. Now, at some point, yes, you're going to use a calculator because the calculation is too difficult, but you still have to know what your calculator is trying to find if we want to be successful computing logarithms. And logarithms are just computing the x one. It's computing the power. What power of my base will give me this number x? That's what the exponent is. That's what the logarithm is. The exponent is the logarithm, and the logarithm is the exponent. The two are one and the same thing.